If you're on the semi-annual channel of Office 365, then you may well have some new updates. They just got released a week or so ago. You'll have the new let function, connect to PDF, the ability to connect to data types or data sets in Power BI. It's pretty cool. Let's go. So before we jump into these new features, let me just show you how you get them or how you find out about them. Because essentially the second Tuesday of every January and July, the semi-annual channel gets updated, but you might be on the monthly channel or the current channel as it's called, um, and you may already have these updates. So, you know, it, it's a case of finding out. So you go file and then account. And then you have a look around here, okay? And you say, this is your channel. And the new release that just came out is version 2102. So that was the February 21 release, which has been released for the monthly channel, February 02, and has now hit the semi-annual channel in July. Okay, so every, if you're on the semi-annual channel, every January and July, sort of halfway through, just start checking these updates. Um, there's a what's new option, which will give you a list of some of the features. And under update options, there's about updates. I'll actually put a link in the notes because you have to click through a whole bunch of stuff to really find where the updates are listed for the semi-annual channel. So links in the notes. Right, so once you have got the updates and if you haven't got the option to update, please just have a chat with your IT provider. Let them know that you haven't got the update yet and why not? Um, because it's good. Okay, let's go. So here we are. Let's take a look at the let function. Now this is gonna build on top of a video I did a few weeks back. Again, I'll put a link up here and in the show notes. I use autocorrect for sort of formulas I use quite regularly that are a bit long and complicated. So if I do autocorrect D, 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 L, it actually builds a little formula for me. Now this formula will list all the duplicate values from this table. But I have to do this. I have to double click on that and highlight the column. Then double click on this, highlight the column, double click on this. So I'm in this formula, I'm referring to that column three times. So if you ever find yourself referring to the same cell or the same column of data multiple times in a formula, then let could be your friend. So if I go enter, this is my result. Okay, it's actually listing the fact that they're all listed a couple of times. If I take Apple out, you know, it automatically uh, changes to get rid of that. Okay, with let, what you do is you can say, right, rather than having to type these things three times and also the formula engine sort of references them three times, which can slow things down, you reference them once at the start in a parameter type way, a variable it's referred to as. So you give that little variable a name and you refer to that three times rather than the actual column itself or the cell. So it can be quicker and it can make your formulas easier to read as well. So the let function, you know, and you can call the let the first sort of um, variable, anything you want, you could call it X if you wanted to. I'm gonna call it underscore col. And I use the underscore because of a reason I'll show you in one second. You don't have to, but it's quite a nice idea. Okay, and that variable is going to be this little list. Okay, the one, the thing that's been referred to three times, comma. And then you write your formula. So rather than referring to this, I now refer to underscore. And this is why I've done underscore, because it just pops up here nicely straight away. And I can press tab. Okay, and I can double click on here and do underscore tab. Okay, click on here, do underscore so but by doing the underscore, it just helps you when you're writing, your, you're reusing your variable because nothing else pops up with an underscore in front of it. And that should be it, okay? There's always a couple of extra enters and stuff at the end. Right, there we go. So it's working. It has used the let, it has referred to it. It said this is the underscore column and then it just uses it. So it's a quicker way, uh, maybe an easier way for long complicated formulas to be understood and reused within a formula. Okay, let, you know, and let can be as simple as this, equals let, um, x is one, remember not to put equals, it's just this thing is this thing, it's not an equals type thing. Um, y is two, 
you can put as many pairs of sort of variables as you want. So you just have the variable name and what it is, variable name, what it is. And then the final thing, something, something like x plus y. Okay, that could, that could be it. So you're just reusable within the formula. Okay, from PDF is the next one. Here's a little PDF I created, it's pretty simple, and I wanna pull this table of data from it. Now I created this by copying and pasting a little block of Excel data into a Word document. So I think it depends on how these PDFs have been created about how successful this is. Um, so let's connect to it. So we go to the data tab where the wonderful power query is. We say get data from file and now this from PDF is available to us. And we just connect to that file by going here and just double clicking on it. And then it should list all the pages in that PDF and all the tables that it can find inside that PDF. So here we go. If I click on page one, I will get this unformatted sort of block of everything. But if I click on the table it's found, it's actually extracted it. Now it hasn't found the headings, which is interesting, but we can fix that up. We'll just go transform. We could type in the headings and then click close and apply. And you'll then have an Excel table that is connected to that PDF document. And whenever you save over the top of that PDF document and click refresh, you'll pull that PDF data back into Excel. So I'll just go close and load and I'll load it to a table. And there we have it. Tables pulled in from PDF. It might be an absolute godsend to certain people who are stuck with being sent PDFs for their data sources, which is a crime, but it does happen. Okay, please try and ask your supplier of whoever's providing the PDF if they can send it to you in CSV or Excel format first though. Okay, please try because PDF is not a reliable source. Organizational data types. Right, I've done a video on this a little while back. Uh, the licensing sort of changed. So you now you, I think every business version of Excel can use this feature, whereas it was E5 at one point, I think when I did my video, but now most Excel business users can use this feature. You need a Power BI Pro license. So I've created a table of data in Power BI Desktop with a price list in it and published that to powerbi.com. And now it shows up in this little drop-down box so I've got price list, I set up a staff one and a couple of other things. But if I click on a cell and put a product code in, like A001 is one of the product codes that I set up in that table, and go to the price list option, it should then recognize it. And I can click on the little um, briefcase -y looking thing there, and it shows me that it's Power BI and it's coming from here, and this is when I updated it. It's pretty cool. And also, more importantly, I can click on this and actually get the price. And this is just a formula, d3.price. And then I can change this to a002, or I could, you know, copy these, copy this down as a formula. You know, I could put uh, a006 maybe, Let's see if that's one. And obviously if I copy this down, this says it's an error because it's not a data type. But if I click on here and then click on this one, there we go. So it works. You may have some excellent use for this. Price lists, names, I'm not sure what, but there's all sorts of opportunity. Okay, and the last one for today, connecting to a Power BI data set. So here's the Power BI connector here, or you go insert, pivot table, Power BI, same thing, okay? So again, you need a Power BI Pro license for this to work, and you need to have published a Power BI data set with some measures in it. That's pretty much the, uh, the basics of what you need. So this then goes off and lists all the data sets you've got access to, and you can simply click on one and select it when it pops up. So it may prompt you to sign in, um, and then your pivot table shows up, and you can you must have measures and you can start creating you know the cost by color and this is all connected up again i'll put a link to the video i did on this just in the in the show notes and a little link will pop up here now
So those are the updates that I'm interested in. There's a couple of others, Visio and a few others, so check them out. Um, hope you find this useful. Support the channel, let people know about it, and I will catch you later.